Landing. You guys can follow this airplane now. Flight Aware 148WT. And it'll go from uh, IO 200 to a uh, Viking oh, 240 to a uh, Viking 130. see what it weighs but since the flying part down here is fresh in your mind what kind of performance does it have now compared to well basically what is it we watched you on flight aware it seemed like you were about 100 about 100 mile an hour yeah. 6.1 6.2 that may not be exactly accurate but that's kind of about what it looked like leaned out at 7500 feet okay well so 70 for 5500 to 7500 is where i ran and and a, and a rough number is 6.2 and 100 miles an hour right Okay, and we'll see what we see what we can get afterwards. And wide open, full rich firewall forward. That's according to the fuel flow gauge. It does about 11, 11 and a half. Okay. So if you if you're running everything full rich, full power, and, and the speed goes up with it, full speed to go up. You can get going all the way up to that. And if you could take it all the way up from six to probably about 10 gallons an hour, you might get another 10 mile an hour out of it. Okay. It's just not worth the worth the fuel that you have to spend to try to push it that hard. For the extra 10 miles an hour. For the extra 10 miles an hour. Right. Here, this, has got, this has one of those famous uh, Connells in it. It has an IO240 with less than 500 hours on it. Yeah. And it's had problems, and I don't know if it was set up wrong. Right. I don't. Well, we don't, we don't blame the engine, but what kind of issues have you had? The fuel injection has been a nightmare. I'm a mechanic by trade. Okay. So... The fuel injection has been a nightmare. Getting it to start when we first got it, you could you had to run it half weaned out to even get it to run smooth. Okay. It was running so rich. I spent <clears throat> three days because I couldn't find anybody that wanted to work on this fuel injection. Because of what? It's kind of a new. Every, even though the IO two forty is it's been around for a long time, it's kind of an oddball, isn't it? Not too many around, or I, that I don't know. Now they, they say I've talked to several. IAs yeah. that work on diamonds with the 240 in it and say that they have to maintain them three times as much as you do a like on them. Okay. But so, when it's running, how's that kind of an engine is it? It's a, it seems to be okay. I mean, it's 125 horsepower. It, it gets the job done. Right, right. But the problem we've had with this is I think the mag timing was off. We had to reset it. Okay. The fuel injection was off. I think they had already, when I looked back through the log books in 160 hours, it had already had a starter put on it, three sets of spark plugs put in it, that kind of thing. So okay, so it kind was, of a little bit of a maintenance hog, or at least this particular one. Well, this particular one or whatever, I don't know. Yeah. But, um, All right. Well, it's a nice looking cowling, and you've got the, the Duke propeller, and that'll work on the Viking engine as well. And actually, it's kind of a short, stubby thing, isn't it? Um, well, we've had to even get it on up. I've, I've laid my own four inch block down there too. Okay. Well, let's get in the hangar before the storm sets in and we'll evaluate everything. All right, so some other issues we had with this was the oil pressure is fluctuating. And the um, oil pressure is fluctuating and there's a starter gear that runs off the accessory case, I guess, that's been a problem with. So it's kind of been one thing after the other. Uh, hard starting, um, oil pressure issues, um, ignition issues, the injection, trying to get it started, hot, cold, uh, in addition to, you know, using a lot of gas to go nowhere. 110 miles an hour is like, 10, 10 gallons and 11 gallons an hour. We'll get a digital um, angle finder. I'm gonna stick it on a, on a surface here and we'll hit, we'll hit zero. And we'll just put it, I usually, just to have a reference, they talk about like 25 centimeters in. I just always use the end of the um, leading edge protection and then I see what I get. So we got 24, 24.3 degrees, 24 and a half. And then at the tip, we might as well just do that too. Now nah, let's forget that. Let's 24 and a half degrees is what it is set at right now. And uh, 
Let me get a tape measure and we'll see what length of propeller we got. It's got the Connell in it and let's just, we're not here to, to uh, figure out this engine, but since it's here, let's flip it through and see how it's got any compression. And that's one, so it's got one good cylinder. It's got two good cylinders. Got three grid cylinders. All right, so we got that. This way. This way. What? The middle. Tell me when it's in the middle of the propeller. Okay. In the middle would be more like here. That's the middle. Oh, you want the middle of the hub? Yeah, of the hole. Okay. Thirty-four. So it's a sixty-eight inch propeller. And that's what's going to go back on there. All right, so we got a 68 inch propeller that we're working with, and that's the same prop we're putting back on. In fact, this this exact propeller we're gonna use, and we're at 24 and a half degrees with the IO240, and we'll see what we end up with the um, Viking engine. All right, so we drained out, we drained out five gallons there, maybe six because it overflowed, and then we drained out another, gallon or so here. So we had about seven gallons. A little note of, notice of uh, vortex generators up here. All the way out on each wing. This is a cruiser airplane, so I'm sure they make, make it stall a little bit slower. Now let's go down and take a look at this uh, Continental engine that's in here. I'm going to weigh the airplane now and see what it weighs. But um, I guess the Katana airplanes use this. It has a fuel injection system. There's the Spider for it. It has the lightweight Skytech starter on it. Uh, I see uh, magnetos there and a generator and a Duke propeller. Yeah, so here's the stuff that you guys that are building home built planes maybe first time or whatever but the little things they don't tell you you know if you get a Connell engine or a light combing engine you're building a Zenit and okay here's a mount there's an engine well now what uh, you're gonna have to figure out uh, where to put the oil cooler oil filters uh, make bracketry for the systems that operate the throttle and the uh, primer and the mixture control and you have to come up with your own uh, exhaust that'll work inside that cowling and it just goes on and on and on and it just isn't an engine and a couple of bolts that go on to the firewall there is so much more to it and you would think that there would be like packages for all this in today's world but no there usually is not or you'll get a package with a, a bunch of hose nipples and some hose and uh, some scissors and off you go over here um, if you can uh, uh, just uh, grab onto like right here because that's the strong part and just pull the tail of the airplane down for us you that? yeah just push that down for me you know I can't what are you kidding no just pull it down the the tail of the airplane just pull pull that tail right down to the ground that's all my weight okay um, You're being a smart ass, aren't you? It is really good. Well, we might have to might have to change the engine. Oh, that's empty. Keep going. You gotta get almost all the way open and start coming out. There it goes. I fly with the 130, you know, 48 states, so 60 to 80 hours, and they didn't add any oil to the engine. Oh, he can, Dave's the one that sold this whole thing for you. <laughs> oh, Dave did? Oh, uh, yeah. He didn't talk to Dave. He just, well, he's been watching that doggone 48 state thing, and things like, that's it. <laughs> yeah. That's, that sealed the deal. Holy cow, there's a lot of blow-by for five hours. Yep. 
Um, that's five hour oil too, that's pretty cool. We're running out of film. Oh, seems like that's gonna be going on for a long time. All right, so with the weight and balance, we got uh, left rear uh, with the Continental engine 323, uh, right rear 329, and they're on the front 324 for a total of 976. We uh, we used our angle finder, got the airplane level with the cage on the top, and got it all weighed up. So. 976 977 and we're starting the conf the conversion from one engine to another so we'll get that sling set up and we got our hoist set at zero and we're gonna lift it up and uh, disconnect everything and see what she weighs as a unit so 290 with no oil and 320 with oil okay so what did we learn today um well basically we took the engine off we were able to get all the bolts out these up here were really kind of hard to get to because there was a garmin display in here um we took that out and right behind it there's more stuffs so we had a hard time getting to those screws. We have to do something about that when we put it back together. <clears throat> Next step is to clean up the firewall. With the Viking installation, we don't really have anything on the firewall. There's no, no contactors out here or batteries or uh, uh, voltage regulator or uh, breather hoses or anything like that. <clears throat> and of course we don't have the, uh, there are no uh, EGTs uh, or CHT, so we were able to clean this all up and get rid of it. The uh, engine is now uh, been weighed, drained, and put on a pallet. And we came out with the empty engine at <clears throat> 290 uh, with oil at 320 as far as weight. And uh, we've yanked out some cables, we got a few more to remove, and then tomorrow we clean it up and the Viking 130 goes in.